if um, if he um, walks in, I'm sure he doesn't mind if we get started right now. I w I'm so happy you could join us today. I want to present Dr. Lee Gong Chen, who works with me in the Department of Preventive Medicine and Biometrics in the Division of Epi and Biostats. Dr. Chen does MD degree in Preventive Medicine at Tongji Medical University in Wuhan, China, where he worked, um, after he graduated, he worked in the Department of Epi and Health Statistics for over 14 years, and at the time he was working there, he also got an MPH in biostatistics. Um, and then he came to the United States about nine years ago. Um, I want to read you something that Lee Gong said to me. He said, I liked philosophy even when I was in high school. I found statistics as a new continent in my life after I graduated from Tongji Medical University. I believe there is a deep and solid association between the two disciplines. So during the last 12 years, he's been constructing a new statistical methodology to do trichotomic um, regression analysis. And it was in that process that he found some optimizations in some statistical methodologies to be what he considers theoretically incorrect due to randomness of sampling measurement. So Dr. Chen's idea is that we need new ideas to form um, new criterion to build correct methodologies. And um, his talk today will be um, regarding the definition of self-weight of continuous random variables. And uh, I just want to say that it's been a pleasure for me working with Lee Gong the last few years. I feel guilty because a lot of the work he does for me is quite monotonous. And he does statistical analyses that I tell him to do. But he's really, um, he really has a, a very open mind and um, doesn't just accept the status quo. Um, so I w I'm really glad that he's here today to, to share his research with us. And this is stuff that he's basically done in his own time. He works for me anywhere from three to four days a week. And this is something he's been developing for years. And um, so we'll hear about it today. Thanks. Thanks uh, very much for giving the opportunity. And uh, Jennifer's introduction. Um, uh, no. Actually, I'm humble. Uh, I'm just a master's degree in statistics. And take this title, uh, so I'm really humble. But I believe this is really a new step in statistics. So I have to say it's a new horizon of statistics. The first part, uh, I'm going to be talk about some basic concepts in statistics. Some concepts are developed by myself. Uh, in the current system, we, have, we may have some concepts defined in appropriate, so we need to be adjusted, adjust their connotations. Yeah. My idea may not be partly or entirely incorrect. So, but I, anyway, I would like to uh, share my idea with everyone uh, here. Uh, the first thing is, uh, I, I consider is where statistics rooted. I think the statistics rooted in philosophy, because statistics, the purpose of statistics, statistics is to help us to know the, the outside of the world. The purpose of statistics is not for proposed mathematical statement or proof that it is for knowing, right? So, but knowing something is not the purpose of mathematics. It's an epistemology in, in philosophy. So, in my opinion, statistics is a mathematized methodology in epistemology, which is a branch of philosophy. So, I think statistics, statistics must be simple, so everyone can handle it, can understand it, can handle it. Uh, in philosophy, we have basic three uh, cognitive orientation. We have three basic questions in that. 
everyone can answer in their field, in the with their question, problem. So if we use if to replace all the words after if, we have the simplest question, what is it? That's almost all in statistics as well as in every science and philosophy. So I think statistics need a simple conceptual system. This is why I try to develop it. <coughs> Some conceptions in the current system are defined in appropriate. There's uh, some confusion, confliction, and something uh, unclear. So I try to eliminate all of them. Statistics begins from observing the objective world. So let's have the basic concept by observing the observation. We'll find what we have, what we are doing, what we can obtain, and what we can do in statistics. That's we can understand what statistics is. This is a typical sampling data set in statistics. This is for coronary heart disease. The, data, the original data set are sorted in HDL, so I just take up the first part of first 18 records here. So you can see the HDL is in very low. In, this is a typical data set. We all develop concepts based on this. Before uh, when I talk about the basic concept in statistics, let's have the basic concept in epistemology. This is three subject, object, and observation. Everyone know it. So I don't, it, it don't, I, it doesn't need to explain. But we have a basic three logics in philosophy. Everyone uh, here may know deduction and uh, induction, but someone may not know dialectics, but someone may know, may know. Uh, the dialectics is a logic developed by Hegel and uh, Karl Marx for how to observing and ob cognizing the object. It, it consists of three basic aspects. The first is observing the object in all different angles. The second is observing the object in an assumption that the target may be associated, may have association with everything involved in a system. The third one is observing the object in a dynamic and uh, developing process. <coughs> That's the dialectics. It's different from the above, too. So, it is worth to point out that there's only two logics in the current mathematical system. Deduction and induction. In the Western philosophy, uh, in the most of Western philosophers, for example, the Rousseau, they didn't think, uh, think about it the dialectic. They didn't agree the dialectics. Also is a philosopher as well as a mathematics, very famous. Uh, he don't agree the dialectics with the Hegel. So uh, because he said the mathematics must be built in a rigorous certainty. 
And the dialect today caused uncertain understanding on a statement in mathematics. However, the statistics is just dealing with uncertainty rather than certainty. That's different from mathematics. So, after we have the basic concepts and the basic logic, let's go to the development of basic concepts in statistics. First is the individuals. The individuals equals to observe unit. Everything in the domain of epistemology is an independent existence or substance, or entity, or object, with all knowable, known, and unknown attributes, by which an individual can be distinguished from all the others. So everything existing as the smallest unit in a specific scope can be called an individual, not just for a person, everything. <coughs> Attribute. Attribute is equal to the variable name in the data set. An attribute is an abstract character of an individual in a specific quantity and a quantity and or quantity by which we can we may define at least one group or category in the in the individuals. So it's an abstract character. This is the attribute. Then sub-attribute. Sub-attribute means it's equal to the observed values of an attribute upon an individual. For example, we have name, a set of names, Aristotle, Bacon, Hegel, or gender, male, female, and uh, abnormal. So in the current statistics, in a uh, convention of the current statistics, uh, a sub-attribute that is observed upon an individual can be called uh, observed value, this current convention. For example, this, let's go back to the data given before. In this table, all the name in a group, in the color group, are attributes, are called attributes. But the ID is not. The ID was given by a subject. It is not the essential object, uh, attribute of the subject. Uh, of the objects, sorry. So it is not an attribute of the individuals, right? Yeah. So, but it, it, it is minimal. Yeah, that's for organizing the data set. So all the records in the orange color are some attributes. Invariable attribute. I would like to take a simplified word in attribute for the future use uh, to simplify our statement in the future. An attribute is said to be invariable if it is self, it is itself, or there's no sub attribute that can be defined and its name or it is unnecessary to define the sub attributes even if they exist. For example, the age group will take if the age larger, uh, older than 35, so everyone must be um, have this condition in the data set. The, the race and the age G are invariable attribute in this data set. It means the risk 
project focus on white men, uh, white and uh, the age older than 35. 